You ready? Yes. Let's talk about your party car. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Vasily. That's uh, the different approach to the drift party car. I'll say this is um, this is a family vehicle. Exactly. You, you brought a family vehicle to a drift event. I'm a new person to the drifting, right? So this was my first build. I started three years ago, and I didn't. I, I watched the drifting, but I never drive. Still never drive till now. But I'm like, what would I do to build a drift car if I never build one, right? So if you build BMW, there is plenty of them. Sedans. You've seen pickup trucks, even vans, right? But I couldn't find any SUV, and because I'm very Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche group, because uh, the TSH after where we locate it all, mm -hmm. and so we're mainly working on Audi cars. So where is TAS? It's uh, Toronto. Toronto. That's in Canada. Toronto. Yes, yes. So, but you're originally from? Me, I'm originally from Russia. Okay, yes. and, but then now you're in Toronto. Yes, I moved 10 years ago to Canada. And uh, yeah, do residential framing for business. This is my hobby. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so then the shop is, is like I a work, hobby. No, yeah, that's the thing, yes. Yeah. So I come there, we build my first stance wagon A4, and after become friends, and I come bring my crazy ideas there, the guys support me, and we start working together as a team. This is fire breathing. It breathes so much fire. <laughs> And it's very, very functional. This, while it looks like it wouldn't drift, it drifts really well. And of course, you're lucky you have Dmitry Ruski yes. to drive it. He's an incredible driver. Yeah. But look at this thing. It's on 22s? Yes, 22s. But um, I run to 55, so it, this kind of situation, it, it works well for some reason. But you know one thing? This is 112 inches wheelbase, so it's like G37. A okay. little bit wider, heavier, so lots of inertia. But there's nothing like, <laughs> there's nothing related to the G37 with this. Look, look at the look at the brake caliper. It's a stock. That's, That's the Porsche. You don't have to upgrade the brakes because they come with uh, massive brakes. That's bigger than my leg. <laughs> Well, okay, so what kind of engine are you running in this? So my old, like, always my dream was to let's swap something before I move here because you're coming to North America, that's a less power country or whatever, big V8 and everything. Yeah. And um, so I bought the car with a blown engine as a project car and we swap a less two with a supercharger on it. So it's a stock bottom eight, a less two, Stock compression 11.3 with a supercharger with a 7 psi only. It fits pretty well considering well, that's I, yeah, exactly. I mean, because it it's has a, a lot of room. Yeah, well, because it, it, there was a V8 in this, yes, dual overhead uh, com V8 with a don't forget the Porsche is not like BMW, it has a big differential in the front, so it's big V8 on top of differential, which makes it all wheel drive, right? And uh, the car is dropped nine inches compared to the stock one. If you look underneath, it's like so subframe, yeah. it's like inch and a half of the floor. So it's still a Porsche subframe then? Yes. And 246 uh, swap oil pan there. Custom made mounts and everything. I want to put it as low as possible. Made it with a E92 335 BMW transmission, triple disc clutch, but Stock rear end, stock axles, and stock differential welded. Amazing. But then how do you get so much angle out of this? Well, Josiah from FDF race shop, he always helped. That's a, our relation started like this because I want to do like slam car. First idea wasn't to make drift car, but to drop it really low, I need to make custom knuckles, right? And Josiah was doing all like angle kits and everything. And I said, okay, let's do, maybe it will drive too. Because I wasn't sure if it's gonna drift, right? When you're building something like that, heavy, big. I know it looks like low now, but it, it don't even look like a SUV, right? It looks like a wagon. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it, it looks very low. Do you know but how much it weighs? Well, the stock Porsche, I think uh, this year was like 
4,300 pounds. But because we pull out big dual overhead comes V8, all-wheel drive transmission, front differential, I think we compensate with whatever stuff we put in. But I, oh, also the stock seats, like the front driver's seat, like around 80 pounds. So I think we're sitting around 4,000. I always want to make, uh, scale it to see how much it weighs, but I just finished the cage last week. So now I have everything done to that. And now I can see what the weight is. So the, the, the really crazy thing about this is that it has the, the most insane sound system. Like, blow out your eardrum sound system. Yeah, because I, I, was, I was where my car is, and you turned it on and it was too loud. I had to put, put on earplugs. Like, it, it was that loud. <laughs> yeah, that's another part of my background. I come from uh, big car audio stuff. And like I'm, we're building party car, so what the party about the stereo in it? Yeah. But it's on, not only four meets. You, we have a subs in the back too. So then, this is a this uh, is mid range. How, how many? How many? Eight, mids? eight inches mid ranges. Eight. Two eight. tweeter. <laughs> so. S so it's ten in the front door speakers and okay. two subwoofers. So Wait. twelve sub speakers. Okay, you uh, yes, yeah, because you tweeter, need a tweeter, yes. Hi, right? Hi. And, and then the subwoofers. The subwoofer is in between the rear seats. Which, and it's ported box. By the way, I love the fact that the cage, you're not ruining any of the plastic pieces. Yes, but in the roof. Uh, not this part maybe, but I, I cut the stock um, roof liner in eight pieces. This piece is missing, I need to wrap. And I rewrap the sweat. And I put GTS uh, Alcantara. It looks... <laughs> really good. So then, what kind of seats are those? This is a Bentley. From <laughs> a Bentley. Yes. <laughs> and then the rears are just regular oh, just buckets. Energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The smallest one I could fit in. And then full interior, pretty much. Yes. Everything, yes. all the rubber. I still have to fit, because I cage, as I said, it was last thing because before the grid life. I was doing some LZ events and all SEMA stuff before that where you don't really need the cage, but now we're doing ride alongs at the grid life. So you need the cage. But like a full on cage, but what really impresses me is that it all fits with all the stock panels. It was still. my first time doing the cage. You did <laughs> such a good job. And uh, Dennis the, Weld for me. The dash, everything is so nice. Yeah, it's still missing pieces. I, I don't like everything, but we will touch it up. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> huh. This is just so insane. And um, the rear, I didn't put any amps because you need amps for the stereo. And all amps in the center console. So here I only have fuel cell and the battery and the firewall. And then you have, yeah, right. So you have, have to have this sort of firewall. Yes, because it's, it's not like protecting from like fire, fire. It's not sealed but it will hold any something it's like 38 lexan so right. even like will give you a time to escape if something right. happens Understood. right yes huh but even like trunk almost every panel i tried to save because i like to have a nice clean car and it's weight already too much if there is no way to save and make it not looking good right because when it looks like this it's much better so then, what ECU are you running in? Uh, this car is on a uh, Holy, because it was uh, the easiest by the time I was building that. So that's why, we, and I had a friend who tunes them. So that's why we put it on it. With all mods, it makes 530 wheels, horsepower, and 530 foot-pounds of torque, 2,500 and up. Because it's high compression ratio, supercharged, very responsive. Do you think you could do this with a Porsche power plant? Well, you, you definitely can, but the, those that's why the, those cars is so easy. You see more off-road builds like this, because engine fails, aluminum blocks is not, you know, working the best. But that's, that's what I said. Our Audi has a 2004 Volkswagen Touareg engine in it. So basically you could have bought a 2004 Porsche Cayenne, take VR6 and put in our pro car, which we're gonna show you later. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the same engine. 
So then, like, is this so you could take the bumper off super easily? No, when it comes no, off? it's just uh, because it's uh, sometimes it breaks. I don't want to bolt and uh, rip apart this. So it's uh, it's been driven for a couple years already. I use I. I had the bush bar and broke it like uh, four months ago. Didn't have time to fix it. So it's similar to the rear, like more like cosmetic ones, but yeah. It's funny to me because if it didn't have a livery and you were just driving on the street, nobody would know. Almost, uh, only probably lowering this wheel, but I have a plates on it, a plate. That, <laughs> so so do, I you still think, can. do you think you could do this to a later generation? Yes, you but know, that's the like thing. The ones without the transfer case, right? Because the later generation didn't come. It's with only the from 2017. Right. So it's the last generation, but that car will be uh, suspension wise almost the same as like Audi A4 because that's what they did from 2017 platform. They just use the same uh, suspension everywhere and that's it. So we, we have all, like, we develop all suspension for the Audi part. But this one, this suspension and everything, you can swap with a, only thing will be different drive shaft. You can put in any Porsche Cayenne up to 2017. So then the rear subframe is stock? Stock, here? yes. You I just, just made an adjustment it? in the arms. And, uh, and that, that's and, it. And then, so what about the e-brake setup? Did you just make I made custom? the custom plate, yes, to fit Willwood. I bought 2012 knuckles because they was aluminum and they had a place for uh, electrical e-brake and I modified and made the bracket to hold the e-brake. That's really smart. Because uh, later generation has a hubs which bolted. The pre like this generation would have the press in. Just look at this. It's it's just completely unnecessary and that's the beauty of it. I, I really, really like this build. Well, you, you gotta make it nice, right? Yeah. Like it's <laughs> so then you're telling me you haven't drifted this at all? Well, I tried one time, but it's, for me, I enjoy build something and see professional driving it instead of me making looking like this car is not drivable. When you put a professional in it, everybody says, wow. And if I, Driving this, no experience, then it doesn't look as cool, right? So, and me personally enjoy of watching it, driving around professionally. That's very <laughs> humble of you. That's super cool. I love that. How did you realize the Bentley seats would fit? Well, just, uh, they look like buckets, so you probably can fit in. And uh, we had the car parts in out, so, and we have a seats from that. I said, why not try to put the Bentley seats in it? Because it's adds up flex, and, right? Yeah. No <laughs> Since kidding. we're trying to achieve something like that in this build, put 22s, drift on 20, who else? That's probably the biggest tires because I think RTR demo cars is 20s, but that's 22s. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for showing us your build. What a cool build. Dude, thank you so much for bringing this awesome thing to grid life. Uh, we love shooting here at Circuit Legends at Lime Rock. Every single year, there's so many amazing cars, especially from the SCP Euro camp. And uh, this is definitely no exception. But we're going to go check out their Audi now. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Awesome.